second edition of Hisham Health Tips. Of course, I am the host, Eoke Hisham Money, and today we are bringing to you another health talk on a very, very important health condition or a health disease that troubles Kamehomos, especially today. Today we are talking to you guys about hypertension, and also alongside we are bringing a special edition for preeclampsia and eclampsia, which is hypertension in pregnancy. Now I'm joined today by two guests, of course, and on my right, on my left hand side, of course, sorry, I'm going to of course start with a lady, Ashu Martha. Ashu Martha, thank you for respecting our invite. Thank you equally, Mr. Hisham Moni. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. As he rightly said, my name is Ashu Martha, founder of Matthew's Midwifery Diary and equally the vice president of the Midwifery Students Association. Right, so that is Ashu Martha for you guys. Of course, if you guys don't know about Matthias Midwifery Diary, please go on Facebook and type Matthias Midwifery Diary and you will see what she has been up to there. Very helpful tips, especially for pregnant women or women, of course, who are dealing with complications in pregnancy and stuff like that. So, on my right hand side, also, I have a very good gentleman here, Mr. Ejole Brandon. Mr. Ejole, thank you for honoring Thank you, Mr. Isham, for this opportunity. I'm highly honored to be here today to talk to you guys. And of course, I'm Ejole Brandon Ebule. I'm the public relations officer of Obnosa Nursing Department at the University of Buya. I'm 21 years old. I'm a nursing student. Thank you, Mr. Isham. No, we are very, very happy to have the two of them. So right now, we are going to go directly into the health talk with no time to waste. Of course, you have heard the credentials, of course. I have a midwife here with me to tackle eclampsia and preeclampsia. And of course, I have a nurse here with me to tackle hypertension itself. So stay tuned and the health talk. Now we are going to be talking about what hypertension is all about. And we need to bear in mind that hypertension is a very, is a very delicate and serious condition now in our country, and especially in Cameroon as a whole. And what is hypertension? Hypertension is a disease condition which is caused by for the fall, when the force of the blood that hits on the walls of the artery is too is very high, that causes hypertension. And again, now so we get plenty condition, uh, plenty worries them among, especially among our mommy and our papa. Then we this way the worry then this hypertension they really worry and it really pose a lot of threat for our country and for many people. Then we also get now so say before man wife baby reach ages like 30 years 40 years it will be the diagnosis of hypertension and where it really be a problem it will be a call for concern where why person before person will reach type of age it really get hypertension we go know say hypertension it hardly gets signs and symptoms but one of the greatest signs and symptoms where we experience with hypertension is pounding headache we have pounding headache and dizziness and some other associated factors the way it the cause we will get this hypertension. And there are also many other things the way it predisposes people that will get this hypertension. Some of them we get things like family history. We the wonder why for our families we have uh, our mother has hypertension, you look into the background, you have many other people dying of hypertension, and you begin to wonder, say, but why if you so say plenty of people that get this hypertension? I bet for tell now today for so make when I say after this talk, when I will be able to know whether you be predisposed for getting this hypertension or not. Looking at your family history, if you get family where you come over family way, plenty of people that get hypertension or that you die of hypertension, then you get to start to ask yourself questions, see which they really cause hypertension. We also get things like lifestyle modification. Lifestyle. Most of we we want for the stay for house. We want to go for small place. They want work a life from Malingo to UB Junction. We need to take taxi, okay, take taxi, <laughs> and all that of things. It costs we. We need to be active. We need to be less active, less involved into sporting activities. Where it, it's not be not be good for our health. Also, the kind of thing we will chop on today too, it will cause people to get this hypertension. We get things like salt, maggi, if woman will tell you one cup chop, if salt, if maggi never reach today, reach the level chop the sweet dairy barley, then they know we'll see and say if it can know. <laughs> and they tell us to say maggi and who we try to cut our maggi and salt, it will cause all these sort of things that they predispose to get hypertension. We also get things like stress, and we know we like students and too. And young people, they will be involved with so, so many stress, they will get many stress with them. Where it worry me. All this stress and so for our life, it help, it also predispose people to get this hypertension. We also get conditioning like diabetes. You remember my mom and my father, if you get diabetes, it will be predisposed to get hypertension. Because why? Your kidney needs a fit of fear. 
for a profuta and all of this fluid and this accumulation for the fluid of your body it will cause you now to be for predisposed to get hypertension and where it will be good also we also get young people that nowadays they mostly be involved in this smoking alcoholism all and all what not all this type of thing so it will predispose people get forget hypertension okay so basically uh, when i don't hear a jolly don't tell una about um hypertension especially about which hypertension be all about how probably um you feel get this hypertension you don't know some basic um tips the inside on how basically if you find yourself in the disease of hypertension but of course we notice say this hypertension we get for make a me wanna understand clearly which the actually cause this hypertension a lot of contributing factors in day you understand you get dieting you understand you get a lot of contributing factors hypertension has to deal with at blood pressure it has to deal with blood pressure people need to know about that so now get no say basically hyper high the tension of course now the force for the blood inside your artery them so it means it probably you get an a stable level of increased blood pressure now they make them you they mostly pull the effect you say okay yes this might have been might not but it not actually means say, your blood pressure they high it means you get hypertension sometimes certain activities they increase your blood pressure but you get to understand say you, if you are diagnosed with hypertension it means say obviously your pressure has stayed at a certain high level for a consistent amount of time before you are diagnosed to be hypertensive and usually of course it's done in the hospital so please it's always good or you always fine for when I go check when I BP them it's very essential my sister will decide on a midwife of course midwife of course it's a specialty to deal with pregnant women of course she's smiling here because they love pregnant <laughs> women and we, one one time or the other we find ourselves in a maternity and I have the opportunity to work with her also in the maternity <laughs> 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 yeah, so we have worked together, of course, in the maternity as well. So it, it was a very good experience. So she's also um, here to talk about the other aspect of it, which is eclampsia and pre-eclampsia. That is also has to do with hypertension. But of course, she's a midwife and she has an expertise. I'm going to allow her to give you guys an insight on what eclampsia and pre-eclampsia is actual, actually is, because I myself probably um, I will learn from this. I'm sure, Marty. So please enlighten us on what eclampsia and free eclampsia is. Thank you very much once again, Simone. And during my intro, I actually forgot to mention the fact that I'm the public relations officer equally of the Brains Association and I proudly raised the banner for that. But thank you, Mama Mia, my Papa Dem, for this opportunity. I'm happy to talk to you guys, most especially the pregnant women who are going to be watching this video. It's an honor to give you this talk and all. Oh, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from it. First of all, when we talk about hypertension in pregnancy, there are two key ways we are going to be dealing with. There is preeclampsia and there is also eclampsia. Now, what is preeclampsia? Preeclampsia is a, is a medical condition which has to do with a um, high blood pressure, it also has to do with fluid retention, and it also has to do with proteinuria. And proteinuria refers to when, when and you test a condition where probably you go to the lab and then the test may do some test where you can, you can send um, protein, they want to check the amount of protein for your skin and they will normally tell you, say, make you, you, may you, may you piece for some container and then they go use the container now, they, they go use the piece inside the container to check actually if you get protein there from your, from your urine and if they discover proteins in that urine, it means there is something wrong with your system that's really a key sign, a warning factor to the fact that you have you have probably hypertension but now for a pregnant woman, that's a warning sign to say she has preeclampsia rather. Now preeclampsia is only evidence in a pregnant woman when she is five months gone. If to say you're pregnant now and it's your first week of pregnancy or even from your first to your fourth month of pregnancy and you discover that your blood pressure has skyrocketed from normal, it's not considered preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is only considered as from the fifth month of pregnancy. Only as from the fifth month of pregnancy, I hope we are getting this. And it's when your blood pressure deviates from normal. And once a pregnant woman hits that hits the skyrocketed, um, skyrocketed amount of blood pressure at the from the from the fifth month of pregnancy, it's described as preeclampsia. And with preeclampsia in pregnancy, it is very, very, very dangerous. Preeclampsia is the second cause of maternal mortality. We should get that maternal mortality is the death of pregnant women. And even in neonatal mortality too, their babies, their babies come out with dysfunctions and all that. Well, 
we pre exams here, yeah, there are a lot of complications. You get you start getting a lot of like for example what um, my colleague here, Mr. Jolly mentioned, you have pounding headaches. You can imagine the weight the baby already lays on you and then a headache coming to add on on, on top of your of your troubles and all that. It just causes a whole lot of you know, you're just you're just in the middle of nowhere, you're just confused in your entire pregnancy and all that. So pre is is a whole chaos on its own and now we are speaking of preeclampsia now about eclampsia eclampsia is always in fact we during our antenatal sessions we always say eclampsia is a big brother and ogapata pata of preeclampsia it's like a progress stage of preeclampsia you know and during this stage is characterized by seizures convulsions you can imagine a pregnant woman who is already you know she's already almost termed to birth having a seizure or falling with with how big her stomach is already protruded and, and all that you can imagine the kind of chaos that may be in a case like that so we should just think of things like that and just try as much as possible to to you know respect the the, the things we are being told that during our antenatal sessions and that's why I always advise my pregnant women, girls in general to always, always, always control their salt intake because salt intake is the number one cause of hypertension Please, we should always know that even Maggi, I recently even read, I haven't read much about it but I heard Maggi also contains salt so please we should try to maintain balance between those two and try as much as possible not to put in much in our food and equally we should also know that preeclampsia and eclampsia can also be caused as a result of placental malfunction your placenta may, may not be functioning well quite well your it may not be functioning quite well as it's supposed to be doing and then it causes some complications which can also lead to preeclampsia and eclampsia and also we should be conscious as well of the fact that the sole treatment of both preeclampsia and eclampsia is delivery meaning we can only try to prevent the signs we can only do as much as possible to stop the signs from prevailing and to keep you at ease you the pregnant woman at ease but then we cannot do much to say it can stop it's going to stop forever the only thing is for you to deliver safely and that that's all that's all about it and also preeclampsia and eclampsia can also can also show up it can also be classified as during the postpartum period that's after birth that's six weeks after birth say, yeah six weeks after birth like 40, 40 to 42 days after birth it can also be any seizures or discomfort you have as related to the signs we have given for preeclampsia can be related to preeclampsia and eclampsia so please we should stay safe make sure you eat healthy and also one very important thing once you see pregnant women having swellings on their feet on their extremities their hands their faces don't see it to be normal it is not normal please stop saying hey it goes, it, the show say it goes surely born as some very fine sweet bikin the bikin go fat it go round it go this it go that that is a warning sign to tell you that that woman is actually suffering it's not enjoyment her baby is not going to come out well but that's just to tell you that there is problem somewhere and she has to go for checkup so advise the pregnant women around you the young girls around you that whenever they take in or the pregnant women that they should start their antenatal checks as soon as they discover they are pregnant with regards to eclampsia and preeclampsia um you said after delivery um the only um, um kind of maybe relief from it is after delivery it goes so are you saying um it's probably just for the pregnancy period that is immediately you deliver it disappears well, majority of the cases are usually during the, the pregnancy period. Once you deliver the baby, you're fine. But the cases that usually begin only after you have delivered the baby are kind of trivial to handle. But that doesn't mean there's not going to be a cure to it. Okay. okay. So, okay, for women, for pregnant women now, of course, the pregnancy period is a very, you said from five months, if I can recall, right? So, towards, during that period, then how can the pregnant women at home help themselves when, if at all, they have a clamps or pre-clamps in terms of managing it at home? while they are, they are getting ready to deliver what can they do in terms of maybe lifestyle modifications and stuff like that you already gave me the answer <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing is regulating yeah. your lifestyle changes that is if you're somebody who used to eat a lot of salt or your pregnancy is causing you to crave for salty food you have to stop it for example crown crackers you have to prevent you have to avoid things as such Mr. 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 <laughs> the way you're twisting your face it seems like you're encouraging <laughs> please we should we should stop it please we should avoid salty food regulate your lifestyle changes and also try to do as much exercise as possible to your level because i know you know during the pregnancy stage you cannot really do that much of exercise as you were when you were not yet pregnant and also you should be able to respect your antenatal checks like i earlier mentioned yield to the advices 
follow your checkups and every other thing will be fine and if possible that's if only possible you should get yourself a bp machine in order for you to be able to monitor your blood pressure it's only of course giving us the insight on hypertension for us that's for us people that are not pregnant i mean we are men we don't get pregnant and other women that are not pregnant so based on on your own side of it also um she was she has given us maybe how management and those stuff is it the same for somebody who normally has a hypertension a, a um a parent at home or maybe our our friends that have it um what do we how do we um, advise them on maybe how to cope with it or how to manage it at home well thank you mr Hisham, for this beautiful question what i must say is that hypertension is hypertension the only difference between hypertension in normal people and preeclampsia and eclampsia is that preeclampsia and eclampsia occurs in pregnant women so in order for you to manage this hypertension if you are not pregnant maybe a man or an elderly person or another person who is not pregnant, what you need to do is simple. You do first your lifestyle modification. You need to modify your lifestyle. What you eat, your diet should be your one number one priority. You should be able to control what you take in. Remember, she has already talked about salt and maggi intake. All of those things are not good because they, they, they predispose you to have hypertension or they can increase the severity of the case. We also have things like cholesterol. Cholesterol should be able to reduce the type of, uh, the type of or fatty food you eat. Like this are granola oil in our days, most of them, to try to get the non-cholesterol granola oil, which is good for our for our system. Then we also need to do uh, talk about uh, exercise, avoid sedentary lifestyle, as she also rightly said. Yes, it's good. Let us try to uh, uh, cultivate the habit of doing exercise. Maybe if you get up from bed in the morning, you can do some exercises. You try to stroll, to avoid taking cars up and down to live a type of lifestyle which is not good. All of that can predispose you to have hypertension and which is not good. We also have, like I also talk about, still on a lifestyle, we also have alcohol, smoking, all of those are not also good for your body, which all the causes hypertension. And also, going back to um, exercises, body weight is also a factor which can cause us to have hypertension. So normally, with when you try to control the, your diet, control your diet, your diet intake or whatever thing you take, like I talk about fatty food, when you control it, you're able to try to lose weight. And when you lose weight, it helps to reduce your blood pressure. Because I'll be bear in mind that an increase in body weight predisposes causes you to have hypertension. And if you are a person who is overweight or obese, it can cause it can worsen the factors or that you experience when you get hypertension. Okay, okay. You, you said uh, sedentary. What do you mean by sedentary lifestyle? I mean, I should say some people they don't understand that big, big grammar. I don't know what, what sedentary lifestyle is. Well, thank you. Sedentary lifestyle is just a lifestyle that you want to just just sit, you don't want to exercise, or you don't want to be involved with any kind of thing. Like they'll say, they'll tell me you work, you know, one worker, all those type of things. And so, now sedentary lifestyle that you need one, we need one be active, you just want to be idle, just you know, for one place doing nothing, and all that kind of thing. So, we know be good way if it costs you, you get a hypertension. A major issue, it's very pregnant women. We see them working, a lot of them in the hospital where we go at home, legs swollen. I want you to give them maybe just something on how they can manage those legs because i think those swollen legs of course it's not good it's not good so i, I mean maybe probably you have something for them at home maybe how they can help themselves reduce that swelling on their legs the number one and major thing is mobility you just have to keep that leg mobile for example you have to if you know when we're praying when you're pregnant you you, you usually have the tendency of being more lazy, you usually draw back if you were somebody who was very very active, the pregnancy has the tendency of making you to be less active, that like time to the point is like you give of sedentary life, you tend to live a sedentary life, so even if a remote is near you, you call for a child who is in the room to come and give you that remote and all that, so do, and your leg is probably, I'm not sure you even hang that leg, you even put the leg up like, you just put the leg down and everything so the few just everything just settles on the leg everything just goes down and for, for if you're somebody who sits probably say you're watching the tv you've been up and down the whole day everything is okay in the night you want to sleep you put the pillow probably on your leg and you put you put the leg you put the leg on the pillow that helps the few to you know there is it is circulation it promotes enough circulation and that prevents your legs from getting swollen at all so you just need to keep the legs mobile keep yourself mobile keep yourself active in order to prevent those swelling okay thanks thanks to Marty of course the midwife for giving us that insight so you guys should be mobile pregnant women try and walk very mobile very very mobile <laughs>
back to a jolly brandon because of course she i'm still staying on that swelling thing a jolly you're in palau in america terms who we'll call it put yourself in a chenelembe position that is our advice the female <laughs> women out there to try to always encourage the habit of lifting their legs up when you lift your leg up it helps to encourage the back flow of the fluid which settles on the legs on the extremities of the, on your legs so it goes now back now and encourages circulation so you should try as much as possible if you have swollings on your legs to seek medical attention and you to medical advice especially at, for antenatal clinics and also encourage having of lifting your legs up in order to help the fluid move back up thank you okay okay so he has added something i told you guys to add something <laughs> so he has talked about lifting the leg up i believe lifting the whole heart level is very important to help um, your retention okay so finally we are concluding with eclampsia preeclampsia and hypertension so of course Marty, you're going to of course give us a take home message for the viewers out there women men alike take it to your women take it to your sisters take it to your mothers of course this very very important message on how they can help themselves when they are they, they are faced with a problem of preeclampsia of course and eclampsia and I think much has been said, much has been dwelled on, much has been emphasized on. Now what you ought to take home, what you ought to remember from this session is number one, be mobile as a pregnant woman. Do not give ye to a sedentary lifestyle, to so an inactive lifestyle, but always be active, be ready to do something in order to avoid the fluid from draining on your feet or even on your hands and your face. Make your pregnancy one to remember, make your pregnancy lively and happy in order for your baby equally to be happy. And also remember to follow your antenatal checks make sure make sure make sure you follow the advices that are given to you during your antenatals and also be sure to reduce your salt intake those are the three major advices i have for you all watching thank you very much of course we thank mati for that very very um good take home message and of course to our next on board today mr jolly brandon of course you have talked about hypertension in particular and you have talked to us about what is hypertension you don't tell them how they do get hypertension you don't tell them how to manage them at home now just give them a take home message something they can remember at least to apply in their everyday life to help them of course live with this disease for those that have it and those that don't have please take to friends that have it take to family members that have it and enlighten them let them watch the video and let them get enlightened Thank you guys very much Finally, to conclude, I want you guys to first of all remember this what I said earlier about family history. So, when you go back now after watching this video, make sure you look into your family history, look into your family line, ask questions from your parents, or ask questions about those who the type of disease condition. It might not be only hypertension, any disease condition that is peculiar in your family, and try to do whatever thing, all the necessary approaches to be able to counter that, that from you from getting that disease. Also, try to, I would like to encourage you guys to reduce on your salt and your maggi intake. Try to live a, a healthy lifestyle by always taking part in exercises. Remember, exercises is good for your heart and it's also good and all in order to prevent you from getting this hypertension. And I did not tell you guys about all the complications. Hypertension can also cause complications like stroke and heart diseases. So in order for you to prevent that, you should do all what all the necessary uh, management that I've told you guys about in order for you to live healthy. Thank you guys all and see you next time. Okay guys, finally this session of um, Hisham Health Tips is finally and finally done. We hope of course with the information Marty and Ejole has given, have, they both have given you guys, you guys have of course gained something which will help improve your management of hypertension or for the pregnant women, eclampsia and preeclampsia at home and of course I'm going to start with a lady. Of course, Ashu Martha, we appreciate you for, for, of course, for accepting this invite. A brain school of, <laughs> yeah, a brain school of, vice president of Midwisa, <laughs> that's the University of the Administrative Students Association, <laughs> and she's also, of course, PR of the brain. Is that am I right? You're right. Wow. <laughs> the founder of Midwisa. Of course, I was coming last to that, but she won't allow me to say it. <laughs> 
So of course she's a founder, Mati. Of course, I appreciate you for knowing this this invite. I'm equally honored to be here. Thank wow. you. Thank you. I'll be hoping to, of course, have you again at some time. Of course, I'll oh. know. <laughs> and of course, a jolly brand, of course, a name from the Faculty of Health Science, PRO of University of Bayern Institute Association. Yeah, very, very good gentleman. <laughs> of course, he has come and given you guys, of course, an information as well. A jolly, we are happy to have you. Thank you very much. I'm also happy to be here. And of coming together from time to time to give you guys more of what I know. Hypertension is a killer. Stay tuned to Isham Health Tips. <laughs>